Okay, so today I'm going to do another Alpha Bridge setup, you know, build with a showcase. Uh, talking about Alpha Bridge, the way I'm using it with this build is with SMGs rather than shotguns. It's going to utilize the Reckless Chess Piece and the Savage Gloves in order to reach, you know, a really high damage output potential. And it's specifically geared towards PvP. Uh, this will work from a solo play perspective. Maybe Alpha Bridge isn't the easiest gear in the world to get, but when you do get four pieces of it, it really unlocks the door to a lot more customization. Uh, there's a lot more mixing and matching that you can do and in the end I think it's much more valuable than the other gear sets in terms of just sheer creative potential. So that's why I'm going to be covering it quite a bit and you know I have my four piece right now it gives me 457,000 toughness. Uh, the primary DPS on the meter is only 163 but I would like to you know give a disclaimer beforehand before I get into the meat of the build. Don't pay attention to this meter DPS okay. Uh, ever since the 20% you know PvP damage patch the meter somehow to me seems like it's more useless than ever so I really do not pay attention to the primary DPS meter at all and I don't think anyone else should uh, either now if you do if you do place a, a huge amount of faith in the meter that's your choice but I would tell you right now that you're you're actually gonna hurt your own play experience if you do that so I'm gonna talk about all my gear you know my the the clothing that I'm wearing uh, then the guns then the talents and the skills and then I'll throw it to a gameplay showcase and you know see what this build actually does you know facing against other players so to start off with, I have my backpack. This is an Alpha Bridge rucksack with uh, skill power on it. I think it's very important to have skill power on either your mask or your backpack or both if you are going to prioritize a really strong heal. Uh, you could easily swap out skill power on the major attribute part of the backpack for something like critical hit damage. That would boost your weapon DPS quite a bit, but I don't feel like I really need it. Now with the talent stacking from Alpha Bridge, uh, the four piece bonus as you can see here, if your primary and secondary weapon is of the same category, they both gain all the unique active talents. Okay, so with the talent stacking, I'm actually going to achieve plenty of DPS uh, despite my very low meter statistics. So that's really nice, and I don't really feel like I need to prioritize critical, you know, critical strike damage instead of skill power. I think the skill power is going to help my pulse as well as my heal, and in the end, it's going to be really valuable. So this is a decent stamina roll, nothing, you know, super amazing. This is only a 240 piece. Uh, there are better rolls that you can get. A 268 version would have better stats on it, but you know, this will suit the, the purpose that I need. Support station range and secret mine explosion radius are not very relevant to this. I would prefer something to do with first aid, self heal, or pulse. Um, and it, you know with this high of a skill power you could choose to run a sticky bomb if you wanted to There's a lot of different possibilities, but you know this this piece does suit the purposes I need But it's not a fully min max piece in the mod slot I have a firearms mod with armor now That's uh, allowing me to achieve enough firearms to unlock all of my gun talents I need to have over I think it is uh, 28 25 to unlock brutal and um, this allows me to achieve well over that uh, also uh, the armor is key in, in terms of reaching the armor cap. You want to build around the armor cap with pretty much everything that you do. So, you know, having a couple of mods with armor, if you weren't able to roll high enough on your gear itself to meet that cap, is going to be totally fine. So moving on to my holster. This is an Alpha Bridge holster, 268. Nice rolls. It could be higher on the stamina. Uh, first aid ally heal is nice. Would prefer self, but that's really good if you're in a squad, which I typically am. I know a lot of people aren't, but... I have to approach this game from what I, you know, typically am going to be running with, and that is, you know, two or three people in my squad, sometimes just one, but either way, I'm very rarely alone, and when I do, you know, fight in the DZ by myself, it's specifically to test, like, a solo play build, so this is not one of those, it does function from a solo play perspective, but it's not built to be in there solo, you know, it does it work really well when complemented by other damage boosting mechanics from your teammates. So the major attribute on this holster is armor, 563, really great. I think you should always roll armor on your holster. There's no other major attribute that even comes close to being as valuable as armor. So that's something that I would say you should always go for on your holster. As you can see, most of mine have armor, uh, just because that's the best attribute to have on a holster. Uh, moving over here to these pads, I have Alpha Bridge knee pads, good stamina roll, critical hit damage. Uh, I didn't need to roll armor in order to achieve the armor cap on these. I could, but I feel like the critical hit damage is a really good trade-off. I feel like it's such a large amount that rolling armor would actually, you know, it take a significant hit to my weapon DPS. Now, while I do get the skill power from the backpack and I chose skill power over, you know, critical hit damage on the backpack... I think critical hit damage over armor on the knee pads is actually the way to go, especially if you have something like an MP7 or any submachine gun, to be honest, uh, anything that's prioritizing critical strikes. So I did choose that, although if you wanted to, you could switch that over to armor to achieve the armor cap easier uh, and, you know, use your mods to give yourself critical hit chance or, you know, skill power or something like that. 
So moving down to the mod I have in there, that's a stamina mod with critical hit chance. Again, I want as much crit chance to take advantage of the critical hit damage that I'm getting, especially on the submachine gun itself and from the pads. So that's that's why I chose to, to put that there. I also have relatively high skill power already, so I could put in a stamina mod with skill power and get more out of my pulse, but I feel like the trade-off is okay, and that's why I have that there. Also, I was running low on mods at the time, and you know this is one that just fit really well with the build. Uh, first aid ally heal on these pads is nice. Burn resistance, disrupt resistance, and disorient resistance. I would much prefer shock resistance, okay? That's something you should look for on your pads in this current meta because it's really going to help. And when the, the shock turret doesn't actually proc on you, you're going to notice and you're going to be really grateful. So I would say shock resistance is the most important, you know, attribute to look for in the minor category on knee pads. I don't actually have it here, but it's not a make or break statistic. It's not something you're going to say, oh, well, these don't have shock resistance. I can't use them. It's going to be something where if you get it, you're really happy. But if you don't, it's kind of okay. Moving over to my mask. I have this Alpha Bridge Mask. It has a really great stamina roll. That's why I'm using it. And it has a nice skill power roll. Uh, it has some first aid ally heal as well. That's really good, especially when paired on top of a few other pieces that have it. Uh, if you have only one piece that has first aid ally heal, it does help. But if you have three or four, like I have, um, it can actually give you a support roll in your team as well. Because when you put down your heal, it's actually going to do significantly more healing to your teammates than it is to you. And, even, and so even with a low skill power, it's going to be valuable. And with a high skill power, it's actually going to stack on top of that already high number to make it even more valuable. So it's something I actually think is very helpful to your teammates. And if you do have it on a few pieces of gear, they will notice and they will be grateful for it. Um, looking at the mod I have in here, firearms with armor. That's the second one I have with armor to allow me to hit that cap. Uh, I could, you know, overcome this and allow myself to use other minor statistics on the mods if I were to roll armor on my knee pads, but I've already talked about why I chose not to do that, and I'm, you know, I'm going to stand by that. I think it was a good decision. So then that's all of my Alpha Bridge stuff. Now I'm going to talk about my Reckless chest piece. That is the other thing I'm using with this build to boost damage output is, is Reckless. With this toughness, I feel that it's okay to do that. If I were running any less toughness somewhere around the 400 or below range, I shouldn't run Reckless, but the fact that I have almost 460,000 means that I can soak up enough damage to make Reckless worth it. Um, I did roll Exotic Damage Resilience, a fairly high firearms roll, and a really great armor roll. So that's why I use this. It's pretty much my go-to for any time I'm using Reckless in a build. Um, the mods that I have in there are Stamina with Skill Power for both of them. Really good rolls. Uh, they could be a little bit higher, but you know these are going to you know fulfill the needs that I have. Prototype Stamina Mods, Power Level 32. These are great mods to have. Uh, I did find both of these in the Dark Zone for anyone that's wondering. I did not actually craft these. Um, they were drops. Now, it has ammo capacity on the chest piece itself. I think that's important. That's nice to have, uh, but it's not critical. You are going to be switching to something like this, you know, a double slot, uh, you know, chest piece with ammo capacity mods if you are really min-maxing in terms of getting, you know, your armor, your, your ammo capacity gear. I do have a separate set of gear I switched to for ammo capacity, especially with Alpha Bridge. Running the four-piece Alpha Bridge, that's really important. So, you know, keep that in mind. We do have a video up for that if anyone's, you know, struggling to carry as many rounds as they possibly can. Uh, and then moving on to the last piece of gear, the second, you know, high end that I'm running is these tactical gloves with Savage. Now, these could be much better. I've talked about these in a prior video. Uh, they have a great firearms role. They have the Savage talent, both very good. But the major attributes are not correct, okay? There's a perfect trio of major attributes that you want uh, in any DPS, weapon DPS build, okay? You want critical hit chance critical hit damage, and then the primary weapon damage of your preferred weapon. So for me, a perfect roll on these gloves would look like 6.5% critical hit chance, maybe 40% critical hit damage, and then, you know, maybe four or 500 SMG damage. I did not get that. Actually, I have 700 assault rifle damage and damage to elites. Both of those are not that great. Um, I really, really should have critical hit damage on these gloves, but the fact that they are the Savage Gloves in PvP, everything's going to be out of cover. Uh, it does make them actually worthwhile to use, so that's why I do continue to use them despite them not being perfect. The consolation prize for me is first aid self heal on the skill attributes. That's really nice as well. I am looking for a better set of Savage Gloves, but right now this is all I have, but it does work and the build is functional. It's a really good example of something that's not perfectly min-max. I don't have every single attribute the way I want it, but it's still a competitive build. It's still going to function and it shows that you know you can make alternative things work with not every single talent and, and skill and attribute being perfect. Um, moving on to my guns, this is one of the most important parts of Alpha Bridge. You can actually, you know, unlock a whole different level of customization with the Alpha Bridge set because of, you know, the weapon talent synergy that you start to get. Now, I have Deadly, 
responsive and predatory. I would much prefer predatory to be something else, um, maybe skilled, maybe determined, something that, you know, utilizes the third slot really well, but predatory is not so bad when I'm killing a target. I am getting healing, so I do get some use out of it. It's not entirely useless. Uh, and then on my secondary gun, my AUG, I'm not really going to go over it too in-depth, has brutal and competent. My AUG actually also has responsive. Now, this is a wasted talent considering I have responsive on both my guns. So this is just another thing that, you know, could be tweaked to give the build more potential. Um, right now, it, it is good, but it's not at, you know, its peak efficiency. So I have deadly, responsive, predatory, and brutal and competent. So when I'm using a skill, I'm getting 13.5% increased damage. When I'm within 10 meters, I'm getting 14% increased damage. And then I have deadly and brutal. That's a really synergistic combo of weapon talents, as always, uh, pairing with that. So, you know, typically I'm going to have a pulse up. I'm going to get the damage, uh, the critical hit damage from pulse, the critical hit chance from pulse, as well as proccing competent for 10 seconds, as well as, you know, triggering responsive because I'll be close to the target. And all that stacked on top of itself is going to create a really... A uh, high burst potential MP7, despite the fact that my meter is going to say it's very low. So moving on from there, I'm going to zoom out and go to my abilities. I run Pulse with Tactical Scanner. This is pretty much the DPS burst skill. Uh, whenever you're going for a high damage build, you're going to want this. It's you know super effective. And then I'm also running you know Overdose with uh, my heal skill, so that I get a very high burst heal. Now as you can see, my ally heal is actually 64,000 versus my self heal, which is 54,000. So that's really nice. That's 10,000 extra for my teammates. Uh, it makes me you know valuable to them in situations where I throw my heal on the ground. Uh, and I do actually like that a lot. I would prefer all of it in self heal, and then I would have you know a huge chunk of extra survivability when it's just me using my own heals. But you know ally heal is still useful. Now I do choose and opt to use the tactical link over the survivor link just because I feel like it's a really stale and stagnant skill. The survivor link, everyone's using that right now. Um, you pop it, you run away, or you pop it to catch someone, and you have you know nigh invincibility while that's up, unless you're really focus fired by a lot of different you know enemies. I prefer tactical link. The best kind of damage is unexpected. You know, burst damage is what is going to allow you to get kills in this game because when you're doing consistent damage, you can't kill players. Okay, unless you focus fire, you can't kill them because there are so many different heals and damage mitigation boosts at their disposal. So if they have something, you know, like booster shot or, you know, they have their med kits, maybe they have critical save on their talents. There's all these different things where if you're doing slow methodical damage, they can just mitigate it and heal back up to full health whenever they feel like. But if you're doing a ton of burst damage quickly, tactical link, you know, being one of the, the primary ways to do that. You can actually burn right through their heals, even if they pop it, it takes a second to proc, and then you kill them before it can. So that's why I choose to use Tactical Link, and I think it's very valuable. Moving on to my talents, I have Triage because I am in a team. Uh, I think it's quite valuable. Uh, whenever I'm in a team, you know, running any more than two of us, I always put Triage on. I feel like it's a courtesy because it allows your teammates to get their skills and you to get your skills back faster. Triage is actually broken right now, in my opinion. It's probably... One of the single biggest reasons why PvP is so stagnant, even with shotguns, you know, you can one-shot people, but most PvP encounters, uh, there's actually a demonstration in one of our Squabby squads where it just turns into a ball of healing and triaging in a 3v3 because no one could output enough damage to get through that. We could just pop heals constantly and no one could actually kill anyone. So I do think that triage needs to be looked at, but it's a very powerful skill at the moment and should definitely be used if you're trying to survive and help your team. Moving on to critical save, again, I always put this in. Uh, critical save using a medkit low health to increase damage resistance by 40%. That's really, really nice. If you can hit that at the right time, you're not only getting tankier, you're probably going to trick them into trading with you, uh, and you know, you're going to be low health still because medkits, you know, combat medic doesn't proc on yourself anymore, which means you can't get like double healing from that. And uh, critical save is really just going to you know, boost your, your survivability at low health and allow you to start to fight in these low health situations where you can trade headshots and with an mp7 you know with the reckless chest piece that's what you want to be doing uh, especially once you pop this and mitigate the reckless incoming damage increase you're going to start to have situations where you can melt them down faster than they can heal and it's just a really fun mechanic moving on to on the move uh this one i'm actually looking into this may not be quite as effective as i've you know previously been thinking it is still a very great talent and i will be using it in this build but uh, when you are rifle budding, I have to really look into the ins and outs of, of what constitutes movement. If it's your character, if it's your hitbox, if it's your feet, 
if it's how, how fast you have to be moving, how much distance you need to be covering. There's a lot of different things I don't quite understand about this talent that I will be looking into. But right now I do know it's valuable, especially when there's NPCs nearby. Because what you can do is you can, you know, hit that head headshot hitbox, you know, proc brutal and deadly in, in my situation. Um, and move, you know, very quickly, maybe even hip fire, proc on the move, and then get that, you know, damage mitigation boost, and then start to fight players. So it is valuable, and with the abundance of NPCs in the dark zone, I think there is enough merit to use it. But I will be looking into it more in the future. I also have one is none. This is a really great talent, especially for something with a small magazine like the MP7. Okay, so with with the small magazine size. Um, anytime you're going to be getting a bullet back is going to be super valuable, especially with the high base damage of the MP7. So I have chosen to opt for, on, uh, for one is none. It's a really great talent. You know, hitting those headshots, especially if your aim is on point, is going to be super, super valuable. So I'm going to cut it there. We're going to throw it to some gameplay, talk about, you know, how the build functions and overall, um, you know, whether or not it's going to be competitive in a PvP environment. Okay, so here we are on Manhunt. Uh, I didn't show the beginning portion of this because I, it was a really slow-paced, you know, uh, fight to get to Manhunt. It took a really long time. Uh, but as you can see there, I do pop my tactical link and I do significant damage. I wasn't actually able to kill anyone because my aim is not the best, but 16,000 crits to the head with an MP7, you know, despite my super low meter DPS, is going to allow me to do mass amounts of unexpected damage and end up killing them. Um, I did switch over to my pistol here. I think I, I ran out of ammo at this point. Uh, we are right outside a checkpoint and before people say, oh, that's hypocritical, you say you won't camp outside the checkpoint. There were a couple of tank titians, you know, that were trying to grief us right before this, you know, in this group of players. They were constantly, you know, shooting their sticky bomb and then rolling around in circles. We don't respect that. We don't tolerate that. So we did kill them repeatedly. Uh, you know, if, if you are going to do that, that is a viable strategy, but you don't do that with multiple people. You don't do have four people doing that at the same time. That's unacceptable to me. And we, you know, we... We definitely showed them that there are alternative metagame mechanics right now that are going to, you know, absolutely destroy that strategy. Um, this guy was the main culprit here, uh, trying to do his, use his sticky bomb, and we just ended up shredding through him, despite the fact that he was a super tank, or, you know, believed that he was a super tank. Um, you know, I do believe that shotguns are the current, you know, hyper metagame. Everybody's running them, especially the M870. Specifically, that one right there has a huge, you know, amount of base damage, and you can one-shot people with brutal and deadly if you get up close and land that reticle right on the headshot, you know, hitbox. That is a really viable strategy, but you know, I prefer to still use automatic weapons. I like this MP7 a lot. Um, I think it's, you know, a well-rolled gun. It could be a little bit better, maybe if it had brutal and deadly on that gun itself. But with Alpha Bridge, you're freed up to to use a different gun that has different talents and pair them really nicely. There's a lot of different combinations. So anyone that's using Alpha Bridge in a different way than I am, you know, maybe even even better than I am, more effectively, go ahead and let me know in the comments. That'd be really great. But as you can see, I do land significantly high critical strikes um, and can, you know, pretty much deal with any player that comes my way. Uh, there are some situations where you might get destroyed. There is a glitch with Deadeye, things like that, or someone, a very talented shotgun player might be able to one-shot you, maybe. I haven't really encountered that. Anything up over 430,000 toughness, i found, seems to be safe from pretty much everyone's shotgun build. Uh, now, I do have a friend who can one-shot me with over 450, but that's a really rare occasion. I don't think that m many players have a min-max build of that variety yet. So if you're up over 450,000 toughness, mostly 430,000 toughness as well, um, you're going to find that you're pretty much safe from, you know, uh, the one-shot shotgun mechanics and also from sticky bombs. A lot of people say, you know, if you don't have final measure, you're going to die to sticky bombs. I don't die to sticky bombs. I just don't. Whether or not that's because I'm not encountering someone who's using it properly or someone that has enough skill power to take full advantage of it, I don't know. I do know for a fact in this video, I was hit by a couple of sticky bombs. Uh, before this and possibly during this, I, I don't remember, uh, that were proccing chain reaction, okay? They hit our whole team, no one went down, and then we floored the tank titian that was, you know, firing that. So, despite the fact that, you know, some people say final measure is critical, I don't actually subscribe to that belief anymore. I think the final measure is overrated now, and that with sticky bombs having fallen so far out of grace as they have, it's, um, it just seems like you don't really need it. And when you do encounter, you know, a sticky bomber who, who would kill you, it's, there's not many of them. I mean, in this group, there were multiple. I think there was uh, three. I don't think there was actually four, just three. But, um, you know, they, they weren't able to kill us. So if they, had they been able to kill us and we were encountering three of them on a regular basis, uh, I think I would have probably put on final measure. But that's such a rare occasion that I don't think it's actually, you know, viable and necessary. Um, 
one of our teammates did down a guy down there with his sniper rifle. Uh, so we did, you know, ease back from the checkpoint. We're not trying to, you know, actually grief them or anything like that. If they do come try and fight us, that's fine, but they don't have to. We're not standing right outside the checkpoint with shock turrets and things like that. I do hate when people do that. And as you can see, none of us are going to use shock turrets in this instance. They have become so annoying post-patch that I just can't bring myself to use it, especially not, you know, outside of a spawn point or something like that. That just really, you know, it bugs me, so I'm going to avoid the hypocrisy of doing that on video or anything like that um, and actually doing that to other players. So this build, to talk a little bit more about some of the drawbacks that it has, it has a low optimal range. So whenever, anytime you're using Alpha Bridge, you're stuck with two of the exact same gun, all right? Now you can actually, one thing that would be a positive thing to do, is get two submachine guns or, you know, assault rifles, whatever you're using with Alpha Bridge, that have uh, really good base damage that are on par with each other. Right now I'm just using my MP7, but a better way to go about this would be to use an alternative submachine gun uh, that would have, you know, a different, you know, set of mods on it. So maybe I can mod the second submachine gun to have increased optimal range from the scope and then actually give me more distance capabilities in fights and I could actually swap between them. The way I built it now, I actually can't swap between them. If I go to my AUG, it has no mods on it. Um, it's a lower gear score than my MP7. You know, that's also to reduce the requirements of it. But, you know, it, I could mod this better and have two different options to draw from. Now, we did fight a 4v4 just here, and it ended up that we went back towards the checkpoint. So, again, sorry for the hypocrisy of standing right outside a checkpoint. And uh, just to address one thing really quickly, some people have been actually sending me messages and saying how, oh, it's so stupid that you're in the lower DZs, why are you doing that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because people aren't in the higher DZ areas. I mean, if I want to find people to PvP against, then I have to go where there are people. And... There really isn't anyone to showcase anything on in the higher DZ areas, and when there are, I actually really find that, that PvPing in DZ 5 and 6 is just not pleasant. It's just not. Because of the strength of the NPCs, no matter where you go, a pack is going to come and roam up behind you and end up probably you know, dropping you or the people that you're fighting, and either way, that just really, really you know, hurts the, the fun of, of the PvP itself. I mean, even if, you know, the NPC helps you drop your opponent, you may think for a second, oh, that's awesome, you know, I just beat him. But you didn't beat him on skill. You didn't beat him with because your gear was better. You just beat him because a blatantly overpowered NPC shot him in the back. Now, for a couple seconds, you're going to feel good, and I do feel good. Every time that happens, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm the best. And then I remember, like, oh, I really didn't do that. I didn't deserve that kill, and I didn't deserve the rewards. So... I do prefer to fight in the lower DZs for better or for worse. I mean, if people want to, you know, insult me for that, that's fine. Because you can deal with the NPCs better and you can actually have situations where it's player versus player and not player and player versus NPCs and everybody's miserable. Because until there's a dedicated PvP environment, which it doesn't look like they're putting in right now, I think that this game has really uh, come to a brick wall. And it will not get past the brick wall and it will continue to sink in popularity until they put something in where we don't have to deal with these blatantly overpowered NPCs in the Dark Zone. I mean, that's the only place that we can PvP, and we're stuck with this hybrid environment, which I used to think was really dynamic before this patch, and now I think it's just a little bit mismanaged and unbalanced. So that's my opinion on it. I really think we need a, a PvP arena. I can't say it enough. And uh, yeah, I'll probably call it there. So that's the end of this video. That's the end of the, the showcase. Um, some really quick announcements. In the Facebook community, there's actually some discussion going on between me and one of the members about creating a community discussion uh, app so that we can link up and there, you know, it's going to be easier for members to talk to each other and to create groups. So there is a poll going around. I've stickied it to the top of the Facebook page. Anyone with any interest in that, please go vote. Give some feedback on that. And uh, join the Facebook community if you haven't already. It's a great place to match up for solo players, to find a group, uh, a synergistic squad, so you can complete harder content faster. Uh, in the end, it's a really great place. You can get build feedback. You can get you know help you know customizing, moving in a new direction with builds, a whole bunch of great stuff. And there's a lot of really awesome members in there who are willing to help you know free of charge. Like they're they're devoting their time to helping other people expand their you know their build library and things like that. So it's a really nice place, and I can't plug for it enough. I think it's a great a great opportunity, and everyone should join that. Uh, other than that, you know we do have the new mics. Everybody said it sounds better. I'm still tweaking the settings. So if anything is off with this video, please let me know. But I'm I'm pretty sure I've got it nailed down to a point where it's going to work fairly well. Uh, if you have anything specific you would like to see, 
please let me know. Uh, send me you know, a message on YouTube or in the comments of the video. I do read everything. I try to reply to everything still. It's getting to be a lot to handle, but I do my best to you know, talk to every single person that gives me the courtesy of putting feedback on my videos because that means a lot. So keep doing that. I love the discussion. Not only are people getting information from the video itself, they're also coming here and getting information from other subscribers in the comments, and that's great. So thank you for that. Uh, as always, thank you for um, subscribing. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for supporting. And really quickly, if we get to 10,000 subscribers, if we're so lucky as to do that, I will make another shirt like the, the previous one, which is now, you know, off of sale. No one can get that anymore. Um, this one, this new one, I hope will have a really cool design at 10,000 and, you know, raise some money for better equipment. And I will start streaming soon. So actually, one last thing, if there's any interest in me streaming uh, Upper Echelon as a crew, if you want to see us stream, if you want to see us, you know, in our natural environment, doing the things that we do, um, please let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in. So we're going to call it there. Thank you for supporting and have a nice day.